Wargaming is a vessel to experience thematic battles, enjoy time with friends, and paint beautiful miniatures. But at its core, this is war. Welcome to Conquest Creations and to Season 3 of the Conquest Champions League. I'll be your host, Jacob Lucas, the Conquest Creator. In the Conquest Champions League, I've taken 8 tournament veterans and pitted them against each other in an elimination tournament to battle it out for the crown of champion. The winner will receive a massive bundle of terrain that we've designed here at Conquest Creations. In this video, we'll be meeting our 8 players and having a look at their army lists. In this season, the players have 650 point armies and each round I'll be choosing what scenario they will have to play. G'day, I'm Sean from The Last Alliance of Noobs and Men. Uh, I've been playing MESBG since about 2010. Uh, but getting into the more competitive side of things from about 2019 onwards. For uh, Conquest Season 3, which I'm so happy to be down here uh, to, to partake in this, I'm running my beloved Dunedain Rangers. So it is Arathorn, putting Hellbrad to the side and then running 23 Dunedain. They are all in separate warbands. A lot of might, a lot of hitting power, and if I'm lucky, I can shoot my opponents before they get to me and drop all that might to get a bunch of kills. This is my most successful tournament army. Uh, usually I do run Hellbrad uh, in that list, uh, but yeah, just changing it up for this, uh, get a bit of spice in these videos, some might say. These armies have done incredibly well for me at tournaments. I've won about four or five tournaments uh, with them from uh, events in Queensland and also interstate. Uh, so I'm very well versed in the Dunedain. Big, big fan of their play style. They suit me perfectly and I'm very excited to get them back onto the table. Our next gamer is a regular here on the channel and a very proficient gamer who's defeated me several times in the past. Hey guys, it's Alex and I'm back for the Conquest Champions League Season 3. I've been playing the hobby for about 18 years and I'm still here so hopefully I've got a bit of experience I can bring to the table. Today I'll be playing the Serpent Horde yet again, it's the army I'm very very comfortable with and hopefully we can bring it to bear in full force. It's going to start with the obvious choice, Soledan the Serpent Lord on his armoured horse, it's a 6 inch banner, hero of legend, he's my striking hero, it's just the thing that's going to make the list tick. He's going to have 6 warriors with a bow and a combination of some spears in there. Some serpent guards for some fight for in the back line. You also have a watcher of Karna in there with the twin blade. So two attacks and can deal with some terror shenanigans, maybe a ring wraith it can pop. And a serpent rider. We have a fight for plus one to wound cavalry model should do heaps of damage. In the next warband, very much the same warrior structure, but it's led by the betrayer on a horse. The third warband is Raza, the Fang of the Serpent. He is a little utility piece. He's a secondary striker, so if Suladan doesn't need to do it, Raza can do it. Finally, we have one of my favorite models, the Haradrim Taskmaster. Look, this is a 38 model army at 650 points. So generally, if I'm allowed to, I can take the time, shoot at my enemy, work them down, and then pounce on them call a hip heroic moves. The Betrayer is going to be using a lot of will just to get the rerolls going. We should be killing the enemy faster than we're getting killed. And usually that'll be enough. I may be somewhat new to the channel, but from what I've heard about the potential opponents, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So whoever I come up against, I don't know if they'll be able to handle it. The next gamer is a rising star here in the Victorian community. Despite not being around for as long as some of the other players, he's made a reputation for himself as a deadly general. Hi, I'm Tyler. Today I am taking Last Alliance. I'm taking just the two High Kings, Gilgalad and Elendil. Obviously taking Elendil because I'm an Elendil crutch, as some of the community may know. But it's definitely probably my favorite army. So today I brought Gilgalad on horse with shield. Alindil on horse with shield, basically eight Numenorians and about 11 Kingsguard and one Rivendell banner with shield and spear. He's not the Kingsguard. And then two Rivendell knights. So I'm hoping that basically 
But whatever I run into, I can just send Gilgalad and Elendil and they can just heroic combat off for days. A year and a half ago, Battle Hardened is when I started really getting into the hobby. A bunch of us are going to Articon to play and do the team's events, LCQ, you name it, we'll probably be into every tournament. I still am up in the air of what I'm taking. It will probably have Elendil. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. It's in August and it'll go for about a week. We'll kind of go there. Our next gamer has been in the hobby since the release of The Return of the King. He is one of the old guard and there is no army that he has yet to defeat. Greetings friends, I'm David and I'm bringing Mordor to this season of the Conquest Creation League. I've got the Witch King because the Witch King is in fact the greatest. There's about 100 ways to build the Witch King and 99 of them are wrong. So I have 3 Might, 14 Will and 2 Fate. Less fate is important because he always dies from running out of will when I use him, so more will is more protection. And he's got the horse, crown and blade. Always take the blade, take two of them if the rules let you. Unfortunately they don't. But we have, backing him up, the orc middle management. They've all got their safety hats on. So we have an orc drummer, an orc taskmaster and an orc shaman on warg. This will form the solid core that will hold the army in the fight, keep it going turn after turn. To cap this off, we've got roughly 20 orcs-ish including a great beast of Gorgoroth. My general strategy when it comes to a Mordor army is I'll use the block, of the, the block of Orcs as a sponge. Like a hammer and anvil, but not quite as tough as an anvil, so there'll be a sponge. The enemy army will come into them. That'll give me time to time a good charge with the great beast of Gorgoroth, and I'll have the Witch King sitting back with his Morgul blade uh, and a compel, so as soon as the enemy makes a mistake, he'll be on them. Our next gamer is the champion of Battle Hardened. Battle Hardened is the tournament that I organize and run every year, so to win it is a big deal. What up guys, it's PJ here, back for season three of the Conquest Creations Champions League. Super excited to be here. For the tournament, I'm gonna be using King Elisar and some Fountain Court Guard, along with the King of the Dead, a Herald of the Dead, and some, some troops. Over the past 12 months, I've been using different varieties of Aragon with different armies, using it with the Rangers, with the Fellowship, and the King of the Dead, Legendary Legion. And he's been pretty good. He's one of my favorite heroes. I'm gonna use him in this tournament and uh, try and munch up some troops. In this army, I've got really low model count. Most of the time, I don't play with more than about 20 models. And in uh, the army that I'm using for this tournament, it's 20 models. My main plan is to get the Warriors to hopefully use choke points, because when it's a 1v1, my Warriors can kill almost anything. They're good against heroes, they're good against warriors. And the plan will be to get Aragon to go into troops rather than heroes and try and kill as many troops as he can to try and bring the numbers back into my favour. And the key for this army is just to delay and hold objectives if I need to pick up any relics, things like that, and just play the long game because I know that towards the end of the game, once I've broke my opponent, they will flee. A key part will be just be holding out towards the end of the game getting onto the objectives, picking up the relics, and taking advantage of the army bonus where the King of the Dead gets that 12-inch Harbinger of Evil. This season, I'm hoping for a much, much better outcome than last season. For those of you that watched season two, you'll see that my game went very, very quick against the very talented Jeremy. Look, look we're gonna go all the way. There is no stopping us. This thing is an absolute train. This army packs an absolute punch, and we are going all the way. Our next gamer is our wild card entry. He may not be as experienced as some of the other players, but we want to see how he's going to go. Is this going to fare well for him, or is experience going to win out? Hey guys, my name is Nathan, playing Middle Earth for just under two years now. Today, I've decided to bring the forces of Isengard. Um, starting off, I've got Lurtz, Rashku, uh, uh, a captain. I've got one banner, one drummer, and two berserkers. Uh, for the Uruks, I've got uh, 14 swords and shields. Uh, nine pikes, eight crossbows, which brings it to a total of 39 models, eight crossbows, seven points of mine. Game plan, normally I play good armies. Today I'll be playing evil army, so I'm gonna try and shoot into combat. That's a bit new for me. Maybe try and dismount some heroes with uh, the crossbow guys. I'm running a horde, so I wanna try and overwhelm my opponent, probably try and fight in a big open space and yeah, try and try and get some traps. Don't expect to do too well in this season. I'm a new phase to the channel. If I can win one game, that would be good, but I'm not putting my uh, standards too high. We'll see what happens. Our next gamer is an Easterling main player who never jumped on the Dragon Emperor bandwagon, so he's going into battle without him. I've seen him take this army to several tournaments now, so he knows exactly how to run it. 
Hi, I'm Marcus. This is my first time on the channel and my first time in a Conquest Champions video. I'm really looking forward to, to giving it a crack. I've played a lot of Eastlings before and that's where I'm going to be playing in the league today because it's the army I've played the most and really enjoy the, the play style of having that really high defence and good options with some big heroes there. My army for the Conquest Champions League is I've got Rutabi leading as my, as my general. She's leading a full warband with the banner, drum, 12 warriors with a mix of spears, pikes, and some of them in upgrades to black dragons. Then got M. Dirk. He's got two black dragon cataphracts with him and four archers. He's my real like heavy hitter. And then I've got a captain on horse rounding it out with some archers, a black dragon acolyte, and some more warriors with spears, shields, pikes, and some black dragons there as well. I obviously haven't got the dragon in any slings, which is a bit different. So I really like to have, with Rutabi as the general, she's really hard to take down. So she can sort of just hold the line and you really get to have a lot of fun with Emder. He can, you can just hit really hard, kill as many things as you can. So that's that's the real plan. It's like Rutabi holds the line and Emder, he gets to go and go and cut up as much things as he can. I think the real the real weakness of my army is magic. I think we've got four will in total across all the all the characters. So really susceptible to magic, things like transfix, not a fan. Really don't, if you transfix the big, big heroes, it's hard for them to do much because the, the rest of the, the Eastlings aren't that great at killing things. Yeah, I, I, hope, I hope I do really well. I'm, I'm really keen to give it a crack and yeah, ready to take on all comers. And our final gamer is a legend of the community and a winner of season one of the Conquest Champions League. He's been in this game since it was released and spent time as the main host of the Green Dragon podcast. Let's meet our final player. Hello, I'm Jeremy and I'm back for the third season of uh, the Conquest Champions. Like the last two, I took a, an army of humans, which I thought would be a good interesting battle, and I'm going for that same theme again. So this time I've got an army of Lake Town with a couple elf allies into it. Uh, it's based around Bard's family uh, with his kids, and then the master with Alfred and Braga, who are gonna cause some problems with that because they've got some interactions that don't agree with each other. And then I've got Legless and Tariel as well, and a bunch of the Lake Town Guard, which aren't seen on the battlefield very often. And there's a few reasons for that. One, it's kind of hard to get to them but also they're not amazing. So I have to play really well to get the most out of them, but I plan to do that. All small warbands, Bard has the biggest one out of all those. So I've ended up with nine heroes and 33 models all together. And most of my heroes are really average. So they're not particularly good. So I'm hoping not to face against anything that's gonna go and just eat up all the heroes really easily. That should be fine though. Could protect them. I've got three major heroes and a bunch of infantry that should be able to hold the line for a limited amount of time. I've got a significant amount of bow fire because I've got three heroes that all have bows that can shoot put might behind them Alfred can give Bard a bit of extra might if I need to so shooting I'm actually pretty good at shooting I can take out a key target if I need to uh, but then once combat happens which it will happen it's got to be getting most of the combats happening with my three major heroes and everyone else just consolidating and trying to just break even or get a little bit of a head just by surviving for it so it's, uh, it's going to be all on those three heroes, I think. Well, my record has been really good so far. I won the first season. Second season, came runner-up to, to Henry in the final in a close-fought game. So I've done really well. So I guess I'm up for something. Uh, again, let's go for another final, maybe. And there is all our players for the Conquest Champions League Season 3. Who do you think is going to win? Leave your prediction down in the comments below. Stay tuned because you're going to start to see these battle reports coming out very soon. On my Patreon, I have an in-depth breakdown of each of these armies where I analyze their strengths and weaknesses and predict how they're going to go. By joining up to the Patreon, you're supporting this channel and you're allowing us to spend all the time that we spend on these videos. I'm pursuing Conquest Creations as a full-time job at the moment, so your financial support means a lot to us and would mean that we're going to be able to keep creating videos just like this one.